catch online predators. Get on the ground. Please get, get on, on the ground now. Men scouring the internet for sex with young teens. She was going with it. Oh, so she wanted it. That's what it it's seemed like to me. This time, we traveled to rural Georgia to investigate. What positions have you tried? Oh. And the men just keep on coming. Among them, the religious. The young and inexperienced. What was your plan here today? I've been in a struggle myself with what I want to do because I'm, I'm still a virgin. And one who fought for his country. You've been to Iraq? Yes, sir. You were expected to uphold a certain level of behavior. Yes, sir. I would do it from now on, sir. I swear. Why should I believe that? This is Predator Raw. Georgia was unique, uh, not only because of the, the location, we were kind of out in a rural area, but also because on the law enforcement side of the investigation, you had a task force, which was kind of the first time we saw local and federal law enforcement working together. Update on Scooby, he's at exit 25 on I-185. So this is uh, Scooby-Doo coming for Ivy. Definitely the black wig. The black wig. Emily is back for our Georgia investigation, a college student who looks a lot younger than she is. She has now got experience uh, that she didn't have before, and uh, she's become uh, very skilled at being our on-site decoy. All right, guys, I'm ready to go. This right. is what he looks like. Oh, OK. There's the big picture, Scoop. All right. You look like that. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it'll work well. Is my mic on? I, it's red. I, I don't know if that means low battery or what. I think red means I'm here. Check one, two. Yes, Frag? Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Emily, get ready. Slow, 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 spin the camera. Turn around. Oh, that was him, wasn't it? When you get into a rural area, obviously, the challenge is, in many cases, the potential predator actually finding the house. There he is. There he is. There he is. Yay. All right, Emmy, he's coming in. Awesome. I'm, I'm ready. He's uh, getting out of the car. He's walking up. The, yeah, you can open the door. Hey. Hey. It take you a while to get here. Yeah, well, you can't get good directions over the bridge. I'm just taking stuff out of the dryer. It'll take a second. I make you some sweet tea. Oh, Why? Yeah. I have to do something to keep you in You can take a seat. I just got to finish taking the stuff out. All right. I like your roster sheet. Say what? So I like your roster sheet. <laughs> I got a roster sheet for my house. Colson, or Scooby Doo, walks in and is very comfortable as he comes into the house. Uh, even talking about how goofed up her directions were. You know, if somebody could give better directions, I'd have been here sooner. And uh, he jokes, and, and uh, you know, then I come out. And uh, the situation is not so funny anymore. Did you have a hard time finding the place? Or? Yeah, man. Why don't you have a seat right over there? I'm good, thank you. I'm you got lost, huh? Yeah, who are you? Yeah. Well, who are you? I'm Dennis. Dennis, why don't you have a seat, Dennis? Yeah, Do me a favor. When, what's going on? What made you get in a car on a Saturday night this late and drive an hour and a half to come to this house? I don't know, I was just bored and wanted to hang out. Just bored? Um, yeah, I said. Bored and wanted to hang out? Yes, sir. So how did you meet this girl? On the internet. On the internet? Yeah. And what did you guys talk about? Just a lot of different things that I shouldn't have been talking about. Give me an example. Ask her if she's a virgin. And why, why would you ask have, that question of a 15-year-old really girl? Have, I don't know. I'm sorry. I apologize. But I really did not have any plans of doing anything tonight. I, 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 I did not have a, any plans of doing anything at all tonight. I did you bring condoms? No, no, sir. I have condoms in my car at all. You had, well, then, so you did bring condoms. Yes, but I did not buy them for So me. the answer to that question would be what? Yes, sir. You brought condoms. Yes, but they are for my... I mean, I have it for safety. For what? For safety purposes. For airbags in the car in case you get yeah, in a crash? Yeah, exactly, for airbags in the car. No, it's for if, if I run into a girl that I'm going to have sex with, you know. Then you say, so do you ever masturbate? To a 15 year old girl? What positions have you tried? Hang on one second. Just, I'm just 
expressing myself. I'm not doing anything wrong. What positions have you tried? Oh, I'm an idiot. You know how to ride? You like doggy? And then you ask... Oh, God, stop. Okay. Just okay. one more. What you say, do you, no, you ask okay, if you okay. delete all those IMs when you're done, I'd hate to have your mom get nosy. I think it finally hits him that, you know, my God, I'm caught here. You know, there's no way out of this now. And he's pacing and calling himself stupid and questioning why he did it. Just, okay, look, just put this down and just explain what's going to happen to me tonight. I'm going to jail. That's what I'm asking. I am not in charge of whether or not you go to jail, but here's what I can tell you, Scooby-Doo. You don't have to call me Scooby-Doo. You call me Dennis Colson. I don't even know your name. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story okay. on guys, oh, men, trying to meet <laughs> teens on the Internet. Now, you are obviously free to walk out of this house, but if there's anything else you'd like to tell us about what went on here tonight and what you did on the Internet, we'd like to hear it. It was stupid. I'm a stupid man. That's, I mean, I do apologize. It's a very stupid thing, me, thing for me to do, but I really did have no plans of doing anything tonight at all. I just want to hang out. That's it. I know something. I have no plans. I, 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 I'm just going to go the Harris County Sheriff's Department was set up in, in like a playroom or game room next to our house. And by the time he got ready to go, the Harris County Sheriff's Department and the rest of the task force uh, agents were in position to make the arrest. On the ground! Get down on the ground! Get 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 on the ground! Thank you. What's up, man? How you doing? Doing pretty good? I just can't talk, huh? You gotta sit there with a straight face. It'll be hard sometimes. Feel like people in this <laughs> up situation. Yeah, you want to laugh. You, know, you gotta get a little giggle off sometimes. You know? I know, you, I know you're just sitting there laughing inside. Thinking. Hey, kids, don't f up. <laughs> It's a bad idea. Hamburger, help, help him, man. You're talking about taking her virginity. You talk about how sex can leave a nasty mess. You know, the experts would suggest that when somebody does something like this, it's not their first time. This is the first time, I'm sorry. You gotta lose something. Oh, you were, you were playing back, uh... Each time we do one of these, it seems we have more cameras, better technology, and Forts in Georgia was no different. We had 12 cameras, five of them outside, seven inside, and the house was set up in, in a really good way for us. Come on in. I made some sweet tea. It's on the table. I just got to put this stuff in the washer real quick. In Georgia, the treat, if you will, was uh, sweet tea, which is popular in the South. Resta Cruz comes in, sees the tea, pours himself a glass, and makes himself right at home. I said, well, nice tea. Oh, how are you doing, sir? Good. How much have a seat? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Well, who are you here to see? I was going to meet her. Let's see. Meet who? Your daughter. My daughter? Yes. What makes you think it's my daughter? I was just fooling around, sir. Resta Cruz makes it clear online that he knows what he's doing is wrong. He even tells the decoy not to tell her parents about their meeting because, in his words, it could be considered statutory rape. So you ever been with an old guy before? No, I need you to stay in the, the chair, please. Just please. I'm just sit down, please. Please, sir. I'm just divorced. I just divorced. Yes, you're yeah. divorced. Yes. And you have children? Yes. And how old are your children? Three. How old? Three. Three. Please, why don't you just have a seat in the chair? When I get there, I know the first thing that I will want to do is take a shower so we can take the shower together. I will undress you and you will undress me. Please, sir. For a virgin to have sex, it hurts, so it's better if I put some extra lubricant. 
sir, please. I'm leaving. I'm, I'm leaving. I don't want to bother you no more. Please. I wasn't going to do this, I swear. I was going to just tell you that I cannot do it. Well, that's not consistent with what's here, page after page after page. Now, you're in the military. Yes, sir. And you've been to Iraq? Yes, sir. Well, you joined the military. You were expected to uphold a certain level of behavior. Yes, sir. I will do it from now on, sir. I swear. Why should I believe that? During my talk with him, Restacruz actually gets down on his knees. And I didn't think about it at the time, but looking at the tape, it was almost as if he was getting into the POW position. And this was a military guy uh, who had served in Iraq. So it made sense that, you know, when in trouble, you revert to this, this position. And I honestly think that's what he was doing. I promise you, with my life. You're talking about taking her virginity. You talk about how sex can leave a nasty mess. You know, the experts would suggest that when somebody does something like this, it's not their first time. It's the first time, sir. I swear, it's the first time. Do you ever watch television? Yes, sir. Do you ever watch Dateline NBC? Yeah, about well, the cops and everything, I know. You ever see the, the Catch a Predator show? Yes, I'm not a predator, sir. I'm, I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story. Now, if there's anything else you'd like to say, say it, please. You'd like to hear it. otherwise you're free to walk right out of this house. No, sir, can I go? Yes, absolutely. Please don't put this in TV. Don't put this in TV, please. No decisions have been made yet. Please. I swear I will never do this again. Okay, I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. Get on the ground. Please, get, get on, on the ground now. Get down. Get down, get down. All the way down. Down, down, down. What's your rank in the military? Staff sergeant. Your staff sergeant? Yes. You recognize this receipt? Yes, sir. Is it, is it something you purchased? Is all this stuff in the vehicle? Yes, sir. The Coke, the webcam. How about Trojan? Is that is that Trojan condoms? Yes, sir. So you brought condoms with you? Yes, sir. If the guy talks about having sex with a young teen online and talks about bringing webcams or condoms or alcohol or food and then brings them, that makes the case pretty strong. So obviously the, the law enforcement investigators want to confiscate that material so they have it as evidence to use down the road during a trial. I'm looking for the key to turn it on. Kyle, take it. We might have. Is it hot back there? Yeah. I think you'd look best in see-through top, lacy thong type panties, stockings and heels. I love it, yes. This guy's coming in with a semi-tractor, he's seven miles out. There are a number of logistics issues in Georgia. And Emily had to go back to college. So she left. Our producer, Lynn Keller, uh, has a sister who lives not far away who has a son who's a teenager, who had a friend who was a young woman. She got some training uh, from perverted justice, and she became our on-site decoy. That hoodie has been on more television than any other hoodie in the history, I think. <laughs> so do I need to hide my hair? What I would do is I would go ahead and suggest pull it back in a ponytail. Okay. 
Does anybody have an extra pony tail holder? Yeah, I've got like 87 in my bag, so take mine for now. Okay. She should put the black wig on anyway. But if she's tan enough where she could actually maybe pass as light skin up from a distance, you know? Yeah, but the picture is dark. Put the hair on and then the hat. Okay. Hold it and tilt your head forward into it and kind of whip it back on. Do you like a swim cap? Come up, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna, yeah. He's not gonna want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Have a hat. At least that covers most of it. That's better. The hat, the hat does wonders for that wig. Okay. Well, that's actually okay. Yeah. So when you go and open it, you gotta do this. Can you do it? You know, this time when you're doing that, all you're gonna let be seen is with your hoodie, wherever he is, you're gonna do this. So all you can see is your arm, and you're going to do the whole, hey, come on in. But keep yourself completely behind this so we can yeah. see an outline of a figure. Okay. When you hit this mark, you don't even want to have your foot out. Literally, again, just your arm from the sleeve down okay. can be seen by the door. That's all you want to be visible. And, the, you know, if you want to do the back of your hair because it's going to be black, that's fine, but nothing else. Okay. You're going to stay far enough away from him that there's no time that he has or have a, has a shot of you like this. Okay. All right, Amanda, tra tractor trailer coming down the road. Get ready, get your basket, get to the door. The white semi is him. All right, he's gonna let him turn off the engine. He won't be able to hear anything until he cuts the engine. <laughs> okay, he's here. I have never seen anything like this. You know, we know Myrick's a truck driver based on the conversation. We know he's going to show up in a truck, but I didn't think we were going to see this massive semi-tractor, you know, rumbling diesel comes up and, and he puts the parking brake on and climbs down and here he is. Hey, you made it. I don't Come see on. how. I don't see how you see that rabbit. Come on in. I'm just getting some laundry out. Make yourself at home. I made some sweet tea sitting on the... They'd continue this conversation from one room no, to the I'm other, really good, and it allowed us to kind of get a sense uh, for what kind of a guy this was and what he was up to, and it also allowed her to be in the next room out of uh, out of the way. Well, I would love to go for a ride sometime. Well, I'd, I'd love to take you. I'm take you. There's a lot of stuff out there to see. I bet. Where exactly were you going to uh, take her in that truck of yours? She wanted to go. She wanted to go for a ride. I take her for a ride. I mean nothing. You know, I mean no. I ain't mean no harm. I'm trying to do nothing. I shouldn't be doing. I mean, she, you know, she's just you no know, pervert. Nothing else. You know. No pervert. No, but she wants to go ride. I take her for a ride. I'm trying not to be disrespectful. He is a motor mouth. He was almost like a cartoon character. He was talking so fast it was hard to understand what he was what he was saying. You own that rig yourself? No, sir. So you work for a company that owns that rig? Yes, sir. And how do you think they'd take to the fact you're out driving that rig around, going to meet a 15-year-old girl? Well, they 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 would look they would look at it only as in the bad note. How did you meet her? I just met her. I was you know I was on the uh, computer. I met her on the computer. On the computer. Yes, sir. And do you often get on the internet and, and no, chat I, up I, I teenage girls? I don't, I don't get on the internet. She's the first girl I talk to. That, you know this. You, you know. know how many times I hear that. I, I, you hear it all the time. But I'm telling you, I said, you know. Why should I believe you? Well, I, I mean, I say I get on, you know, once one day or two days a month. You know, if, if, if and when I do come in town, I, I come home maybe once a month. It was three minutes into the internet conversation when she told you she was 15. So you knew all the way through this that she was 15 yeah, and, years and old. I, and I, you know, I, I told you, I said, Joe, you know what? You know, all right, hang on, hang on, hang on. You say, well, I do think you're damn sexy, and was wanting to know if you have oh. ever had sex. Oh, yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah, well, I have it all right here, oh, so you might as well just tell me right now. I ain't disputing it. No, sir, yeah. I ain't disputing it. I'm just, I'm just saying, damn, I didn't... You know, I just fell into the conversation, you know, and... Uh, what attracted uh, you to this particular girl? Well, when I, when I got to talking to her, to be honest with you, it, it was her, uh, just the way she was intelligent, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I guess she just came, you know, maturity, she, she's like, she had a logical head. She you know? seemed mature. Well, she just, like, you know, she had a logical head on shoulders, you know, she was easy to talk to, and... I think you'd look best in see-through top, lacy thong-type panties, sure. stockings, and heels. Oh, I feel, yeah, that's... It sounds like you thought you had a hot prospect for a sexual liaison. I, I, there. I, I told myself I went down here, you know, Joe, get down there and just talk to her, you know, just, you know, get, you know, to, you know, friendly with you, know, just be friends with I think you probably have a very nice ass as well. 
Yeah. I know I said some things. I mean, I just, I just fell into the conversation. I ain't going to say any time I made no excuses for the things I said because I fell into the conversation. It was totally, uh, it, it was wrong. And, uh, and honestly, if you were able, I'd take you with me on trips. I mean, I was wrong and I, I, fell, into, I fell into the conversation and I, I just, I, I fell into the conversation and didn't. I need to tell you that I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC and we're doing a story on adults yes, who try to meet young teens on the internet. If there's anything else you'd like to tell us, we're uh, happy to hear it. And if not, you're obviously welcome to walk out the door you came in. No, sir. I mean, I, like I said, I told myself on my way down here, just talk to her, you know, and be, you know, get, you know, get to know her, you know, don't, don't, you know, just stay away from the, uh, the uh, sexual overtones, you know, and talk to her. So you're trying to protect her? No, I was trying to, no, trying to tell myself. Oh, you're telling what, yourself? I was telling, on the way down here, I was talking yeah, I, was talking I didn't to myself, see any mentoring no, going on. On, on the way down here, I was telling myself, Joe, you get down there, talk to her, just, you know, and I know, I know, go, you go to jail. Well, go ahead, you well, can walk right out. Well, well, I have no control over the okay. truck. Okay. Uh, I'll ask you my guy. Get on the ground! Now! All the way down. All the way down. Yes, sir. Oh, hey, that's back. Oh. Uh, yes, sir. Let's get him up there. Oh, please. They find cocaine in his truck, and that may explain why he was talking a mile a minute uh, in my earlier conversation with him. Myrick had a long rap sheet for crimes, including uh, felony drug possession and about six misdemeanors. He'd been in trouble before. Can I use your restroom? Oh, why don't you uh, have a seat real quick? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what this is. Oh, no, please, I need you to Yeah, I know what this was. I, I just went to test it, that's all. Okay, I know what sir. Hey, I knew it went with us. Watch real quick. But I made some sweet tea if you want some. It sure is good. It is good. <laughs> I'll wait. Well, it's just gonna take a minute. Go on in. Huh? Oh, okay. We think he left his car running, he's going back to turn it off, and he's gonna come in. That's what we believe. Christopher Cannon doesn't hang out for very long. When someone comes in and immediately asks to use the restroom, it creates a problem for us. I mean, you'd like to say, yeah, sure, but once that happens, you lose control of the situation, and you don't know what he's doing in the restroom. You have no way of finding out, and so it's trouble for us. Can I use your restroom? Oh, why don't you uh, have a seat real quick? Oh, yeah, I know what this is. Oh, no, please, I need you. Yeah, I know what this was. I, I just went to test it, that's all. Okay, I know what it is, sir. Thanks. I knew what it was. What were you thinking what? Please! Stop! Stop! Get down! 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 Get the more investigations you do, the more people would know what's going on and the more people would flee. But actually, it's been the opposite. The more we do it, the fewer guys flee. And I'm not sure whether that's uh, because you know, they know that law enforcement is doing a parallel investigation and they're going to get arrested, so they're not in a big rush to run out there, or whether in some cases they want to just get this off their chest. Just because Cannon didn't stick around and talk to me didn't mean he was out of trouble. Obviously, he was arrested by the police and uh, did an interview with the police later, and uh, that we had access to that. What we've got here, basically, you've been caught in a sting, sting operation. Of course, that's why you're in handcuffs. I've seen it on TV. Who were you coming to meet? Uh, whoever. What was I, her name? I can't. I'm so. Yeah, but you drove 115 miles. I know. I, I kept saying to myself, Why am I coming out here? Why, what are you doing? What are you doing? Turn around. Turn around. And how old are you? 33. 33. So you're twice her age. Yeah, I wasn't planning on doing it. I swear. I wasn't going to do it. And she kept talking about the swimming pool and chatting back with me, you know, getting flirtations with me. Why would you even have a, a sexual conversation with a with a fifteen year old? I really tried to avoid her when I first met her. Um, every time I get online, you know, she initiate the conversation and you know, maybe 
you know, flirt a little bit. But. I mean, you said you didn't initiate the conversation, but actually you did. You the first she never talked to you. You said hello, Natalie, because you saw oh, her in a chat room. Yeah. And how are you doing today? Yeah, I didn't initiate. Yeah, just chatting. And you she asked did. her if she's horny now, and then you asked her if she's wet now. Why would you care if a fifteen year old is wet? Stupidity, man. I mean, I don't know why. It's just and you tell her you'll be gentle. What are you referring to when you're talking about being gentle? Just being with her. Nothing sexually touching her and all that. Chris, Chris please, we don't, we, we've been doing this too just, long. Yeah, just... I, I mean, understand. I understand y'all go through I, I just saw you do the sign of the cross, so I know you're, uh, you're probably a religious man. I'm about to... <laughs> and you would probably feel better if you... If came, it never happened. Came, yeah, never happened. It's funny. When I saw this on Dateline... Yeah. Two months ago, or yeah. whatever. You show up in the middle of it. Yes, I'm like, that is so sick. Maybe you need some help. <laughs> Maybe you need some help. I'm saying, it's just, I guess I was bored. And I'm a director at my church. I can't believe this. But it's going like a record or anything? Ugh. Yes, you're being charged. Do you possibly need to get enrolled in some counseling for a, maybe you have an addiction with the internet and don't realize it? Not the internet. We live by it today. Mm -hmm. But I think you have a serious problem you need to get some help with. Not at your church, but somebody that's professionally trying to treat this. Mm -hmm. Here you have a guy who's a youth director at a church. The judge makes it very clear that you will not be going back to this job after engaging in this kind of activity. I am going to suggest to you that as a condition of this bond that you find another position in your church until this is resolved. So working with minor children is not one from this point forward. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Square that with what's on your MySpace website where you talk about Jesus rocks. That's the struggle in the I love this spoof thing we do with the phones now, but it takes forever to dial all these numbers. You just couldn't make this up. There we are, it's a Saturday afternoon, and there's this massive wildfire in Northern California. That causes a power outage, and that knocks all Yahoo chat rooms offline. So for like nine hours, the perverted justice decoys couldn't do their jobs. Not only was that a problem for that day, it created a problem for the next day because the decoys couldn't make dates for Sunday. So this had a very serious impact on our investigation. Hey, Matt. It's Angel. Where are you at? After the date is made and the potential predator says he's in fact coming over, they always have a follow-up phone call. So we kind of have a better sense of when these guys are going to show up. Pib talked to Matthew Cogburn and kept track of Cogburn uh, as he got closer to our hidden camera house. Walking up the walk towards the door. Where's... She may not even have the door. Eat, eat, eat. All right, now back up, back up, back up. He's right there. Keep going. Hi, come on in. I just got to put this in the dryer real quick. Okay. Just take a seat, because if I don't put this in the fire, it gets really wrinkled. Don't get in a lot of trouble. Come on into the kitchen and take a seat. I even made some sweet tea. I'll get it out. Alright. Cogburn wanted a blonde. And Emily isn't naturally blonde. So we had to improvise and come up with a blonde wig for Emily to wear uh, to be seen at the door when Cogburn shows up. Did you have a hard time getting here? Well, the road that I was looking for didn't, didn't show up. My fault with the directions. No, no. I got directions off my computer. Why don't you have a seat there and uh, get comfortable for that? I had a feeling what was going to happen. You had a feeling what was going to happen. Go ahead, sit on, please. No. I, I, well, no, this is, I need to talk to you about a couple things, and I think you're going to want to talk about it. It's going to take a few minutes, so why don't you have a seat? Cogburn immediately recognizes me. It was one of the first investigations where we were seeing a number of guys who had seen previous to Catch a Predator investigations. 
and had shown up and stayed and chatted anyway. Is this going to be on the national uh, news? Stuff? I'm sorry, be on what? Is this the national news, all that stuff? Which one are you talking about? Oh, what they do on 13 or, or NBC. NBC? Yeah. You mean like Dateline NBC? Yeah. Okay, like, you need to keep your hands out of your pocket for just a minute. Go ahead, please sit down. I, I've just been on the road two hours. Okay. What was your plan here today? I, I can't answer that as I want to because I've been in a struggle myself with what I want to do because I'm, I'm still a virgin and I just, yeah, I, I think it's stupid that I did this. How old are you? I'm 22. 22. And how old was the girl you were chatting with? Uh, the girl said she was 13 and 14. 13 and 14. And you thought that it would be okay to come over here and visit a young girl home alone? I wanted to think it was okay, but I uh, just... Now, I'm looking at this chat log here. 16 minutes into this discussion, you ask if she can do deep throat. Explain that to me. No reason to explain it. No reason to explain it. How do you feel about sex? You on birth control or are you sticking with condoms? Here's a guy, looks like the kind of guy anybody would be you know, happy to have their daughter date. You look at his MySpace page. His hero is God. His motto is Jesus rocks. You got toys? Is, is there a need? Um, well, I want you to I, I, square I, that with what's on your MySpace website, where you talk about Jesus rocks. That's the struggle I'm in. Mean, and in heroes, God, you're duh. You're going to do this too. Right? Well, you need to know that I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who try to meet teens online. If there's anything else you'd like to tell us, we'd like to hear it. Otherwise, you're obviously free to be on your way. As I'm finishing my conversation with Cogburn, I ask if, you know, there's anything else he'd like people to know. You know, he turns and says, Be careful. Keep your jeans in your jeans. Keep your what? Jeans in your jeans. Jeans in your jeans. That's your advice. And it took me a few minutes to figure out what he was talking about, but he meant jeans as in DNA matter, in jeans as in pants, and uh, it's his uh, clever way of saying, uh, you know, don't get yourself in one of these situations. Get on the ground! Get down on the ground! All the way there. Damn, damn. Matthew, how'd you go at the house today? I'm just curious. I pulled up um, in front of the house, like she had, she had said, and got out, and she was coming out the door, and I saw she had a wig on. I was, was like, this is odd. I, mean, I had I had a little bit of suspicion before I even got there. Did you engage with the gentleman that talked to you? Yeah, yeah. What happens with that? I don't know. I'm just asking me questions about it. Just trying. To, I, I took it. I took offense to it. I thought he was trying to put me down. Man, I was going. I was going to walk out initially. After this, it's just deleted. I've been in a. I'm not gonna say a mental struggle, but I didn't solely deep down I didn't have any intentions to do anything. I, I enjoy meeting new people. Um, and as weird as it sounds, I, you know, I've been able to talk the way I talk and this is my punishment. I let go. In his interview with the detectives, he says uh, that, that the, the most important thing that he's got to do is call his uh, employer and say that he can't make it in for work. I mean, on almost every level, he seems like a diligent kid, but for this behavior online and the fact that he showed up to, to uh, you know, have this date. You say you're a virgin? Yes, ma'am. It gets pretty graphic here. This is my dark side. Okay. Well, we all tend to have one of those. Hey. And it can be overcome. I, I it's, it, this is my it's a slap. hurdle. It's a hurdle. Well, this is my slap in the face to wake up and stop. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. 
So you're saying it's normal to have sex with a 13-year-old girl? No, sir. I didn't say that at all. I'm just saying that would be the cleanest, best pleasure. Cleanest, best pleasure. My perfect buddy, Cody, he's a uh, parolee. We know before Cody Green even gets there that he could be trouble. He's got a, a history with police. He was on uh, probation for drunk driving. He tells me in our discussion that he got into trouble again for, I guess, leaving the scene of an accident. And um, here he is, about to get in trouble yet another time. He's not coming for the handcuffs. He's coming he for come the other thing. He wants to meet Chris Hansen. <laughs> Cody Green shows up in this fairly new, expensive, you know, Cadillac SUV. Maddie. Hey, I'm up here. Yeah, I'm just going to drop into the washer, but I made some sweet tea. Come on in. He comes in, he's got his cap on, and he's ready to, to meet his dream date. Yeah, I made some tea, and it's on the table. Did you bring me my chocolate? Yeah, I brought you some chocolate. Did you bring me my chocolate? Hey! Why don't you just step right over there, please? Do you have a seat right in that chair? Please sit down. I may need to bring with him, so I swear to I, I need I need you to sit down and you can tell me all about it, I promise. Please, sir, I really drove this far for no reason. You drove this far for no reason? Yes, sir. I swear to you, I asked her, and I swear to you, I asked her this. I you asked you asked who? I asked Maddie. T take your time. I'm gonna let you explain the whole thing. I said, if this is really not what you're looking for, I really want you to tell me that. Because I will come over and I will I swear I will just be with you and I will not touch you, anything like that, is what I said and I can prove that to you, I will show it to you. You'll show me how? Please, I really, I swear sir, I'm a desperate person, I need a girl in my life and I'm, if she really wanted to be my friend, that would be all I needed from her. I've never hurt anyone, I've never done anything, I would not have hurt her. Now what did you bring with you? Chocolate, like she asked me. He's most likely there to get food for the decoy. I think she said that was one thing he was supposed to do. And white chocolate. That yes, sir. That's what I told her I was bringing. What about condoms? Yes, sir. I have them also, but that was not my intention. I swear to you, sir. What were you going to use the condoms for? She told me to bring them also. So you did everything just because she told you. Yes, to. sir. I swear to you, that is the reason for it. Then why did you send her pictures like this? Because she asked me to. She asked you to send she pictures. She asked me to send new pictures, I know. Right. So there's a big difference between sending a photograph of yourself and sending pictures of your genitals. It's not like the decoys are asking to be sent these pictures. I mean, this, these guys offer it right up. Did you say you are ready to have my thang in your mouth? Yes, sir. What do you mean by that? Are you ready to have my in your mouth? You know what I mean? Because she was, she was going with it. She was. Oh, so she wanted it. That's what it it's seemed like fault. to me. She says, "You don't mind? I'm a virgin." You say, "If you don't mind me taking it from you, I actually would love it and never have been with a virgin." I know it's not respectful, but I was just asking her if she wanted to do that or not. This is not even like I was just looking for girls that were this young and. I was looking to get in trouble and everything like this because I was telling her this. I was like, this is illegal on phone conversations, on online and stuff like that. And I was like, you swear to me, you're not going to get me in trouble. And I swear I will never disrespect you is what I was pretty much meaning. To so you're the victim here? No, sir, I'm not the victim. I came here for, yes, for reasons like that. But if she really didn't want it, sir, I swear to you, I would have never tried it. But if she was open to the idea, yes, you would have had sex with a 13-year-old girl? Probably, yeah. Why? Because it's so alluring to have sex with a 13-year-old girl? It's just something that you, you'll probably never have again. That would be probably the cleanest, best pleasure, I would say. The cleanest, best pleasure yes, sir. is to have sex with a 13-year-old girl? Yes, sir. You can't meet any girls who are 20 years old? No, sir. I really can't. You got that nice truck out there? Yes, sir. Got the clothes thing going on? That's, that's material, sir. Girls, girls look deeper for what they want in guys. Well, there's something you got to know. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Yes, sir. 
Have you seen one of our computer predator shows before? No, sir. This is one of them. We're doing stories on adults who try to meet teens on the internet for sex. If there's anything else you want to tell us, we'd like to hear it. If not, you're obviously free to walk out that door. Thanks for Based upon the items found in his SUV, it looked like Cody Green was planning to spend the night. I mean, he had spare clothes, condoms, you know, everything was there. Watch this. Follow him, follow him. He is not backing down, Cody Green. You know, gives the cameraman the finger. He's defiant till the end. What's your right hand for? shower, shampoo, and change out and put on one of the black and white uniforms. Um, I mean, you get caught once, you take your punishment, you get some help, and you move on with your life, but you get caught twice. I mean, that raises serious questions about your ability to be rehabilitated. I think a lot of these guys, once they're caught, realize how stupid it was for them to do it. Some of these guys just don't ever think it could happen to them. Police, FBI, they do these investigations across the country every day, but they can only be in so many places. So the odds are overwhelmingly in the potential predator's favor of not getting caught. In spite of the challenges, we still had 24 guys show up in like four days. Some of these guys got, you know, four years or more in prison.